Hey guys, it's Sarah with americantrucks.com and today we have a review and install of the HD replacement front bumper fitting your 13 to 18 Ram 1500 excluding the Rebel. This is perfect for the Ram owner who's looking for a beefy steel front bumper that also includes the brush guard section up top to give you the most protection for your front end. This full width front bumper features heavy duty plate and tube steel construction with a nice gloss black powder coat finish. It also includes brackets to use your factory fog lights and also mounting points for your factory sensors or the sensor plugs themselves if you do not have them on your truck. This bumper also offers several recovery options up front. It does have mounts for you to add some D-rings up there and it also has a hitch receiver for even more recovery options. So as far as price goes, this bumper comes in at around $1,400, which is mid to higher end price wise when compared to other bumpers. However, when compared to other full coverage front bumpers, this one's actually on the lower end and it comes with a lot of the same features. This one also will give you a ton of recovery options up front and a nice sleek black finish to give you an aftermarket look. So as far as the install goes, I'm giving this one a three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. It does feature a direct bolt up install with no modification required that is fairly straightforward. However, because of the size of this bumper, you will need some helping hands to get it mounted up. All in all, it can be done within two hours. So with that said, let's check out that install. For this install, we used an impact gun, but a regular hand ratchet will work just fine. You'll also need 19, 18, 17, and 10 millimeter wrenches, a pop clip removal tool, 19, 18, 16, 10, and seven millimeter sockets, and you may want a small extension. All right, so the first step in our uninstall with the hood pop, we're gonna start to remove our grill. Now, one important step is that your truck will likely have a rad support cover, and you'll need to remove that before we can see the bolts for the grill. Our truck does not have it, but all you'll need to uninstall it is a pop clip removal tool to remove all the pop clips and then remove the cover itself. Once you've done that, grab a 10 millimeter socket and let's get the bolts out of the top of the grill. Grab that 10 millimeter socket and remove all four of the bolts along the top of the grill. Once all of the bolts are out of the top of the grill, grab each of the brackets and pull backwards, and then grab the grill itself and pull straight back towards you. Now we're underneath our bumper, and before we disconnect it, we need to unplug the fog lights. There's a main fog light connector here, or you can unplug the back of each fog light either way. Go ahead and press down on the connector, and pull back to disconnect it. Now we're on the inside of the wheel well and there are four bolts that we need to remove. Now our truck is missing a few, so these bottom two are not there. You will need to remove those as well. And these top two will either be a seven millimeter like you see here, or some may be a Phillips head. So you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver or a seven millimeter socket. Go ahead and get these removed. Now we can pull back the wheel well liner and just pull it to the side. Now you should see two bolts on the inside here, one facing up and one facing down. It should be two 10 millimeters. Might be a little bit hard for you guys to see. We're gonna get those removed. So here are the two bolts. You'll see this first one that you can actually see goes up from the bottom and you'll see the threads on the top. There is one that you can't see that's directly on the inside of it next to the fender. This one goes from the top down. So they're sort of opposite of one another. We need to remove both. So to remove these, grab a 10 millimeter socket or we're using a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench and go ahead and loosen these up. Again, this might be a little bit hard to see.
Now for the inside one, you may want a 10 millimeter socket instead, just to clear the first one we took out. All right, so now all of the bolts are out of this side of the bumper. Repeat that exact same process on your driver's side, and then we'll head underneath to remove the bolts on the frame. So we're underneath our truck here. You can see the end of the frame where it meets the bumper. There should be four nuts on each side. So what we're gonna do, we're on the passenger side here. We're gonna remove the four nuts. Grab an 18 millimeter socket. Go ahead and get these removed. Repeat that with the rest of your nuts. You may need to put a hand behind these studs just to hold it in place uh, if they are moving to remove the nut. And now that you have those bolts out of the side of the frame, make sure you repeat that on this side, and then you can grab your bumper and remove it off the truck. Next up, we have to remove these plastic trim pieces. There are three bolts, one on the inside, one in the center, and one towards the edge. We are missing this one at the edge here, so grab a 10 millimeter socket. You may want a small extension, and go ahead and get these removed. Now that you have this side removed, go ahead and repeat those steps to remove the trim piece on the other side. Now this step is optional, but you can remove the plastic trim piece across the front just to make this a little bit easier because we do have coverage of this on the new bumper. Go ahead and grab your 10 millimeter socket. You may want a small extension as well. And remove these bolts. Should be two on this side and two on the other side. Now before we can get our bumper mounted up, we are gonna mount up these brackets. Now they are side specific and they just mount right up to your frame. What you're gonna do is grab three of the larger hex bolts and one slightly smaller for this inside corner. We're starting with the larger hardware. We're using a washer on each side. and a nylon lock nut on the back side. Now we're gonna install these and snug them up, but we're not gonna tighten them down all the way so that we can get the bumper mounted up and then we'll tighten at the very end. Now again, we have the slightly smaller hardware here for the top left corner. You'll notice because the opening is not large enough for those larger bolts to fit through. Now, in order to snug these up, we are gonna use some tools. 
because it is a lock nut, we can't really snug it by hand. But we do want to shoot for about hand tight so that we can still move this bracket around so we can adjust the fitment of the bumper. I have an 18 millimeter socket up front and then a 19 millimeter wrench to hold the nut in place. Go ahead and tighten these down snug, but not all the way tight. And for the smaller one, we're using a 16 millimeter socket for the bolt and a 17 millimeter wrench for the nut on the back side. Now you can repeat that on the other side. Now go ahead and snug these up so we can finish mounting our bumper. Keep in mind, we want them snug but not all the way tight so we can make adjustments to the fitment of the bumper. So the support bracket goes on the bottom of the frame and meets the bracket we just installed on the inside. Now in order to install this bracket, there is one bolt on the bottom of the frame that we need to remove. Grab your 18 millimeter socket and go ahead and remove this. Now we can line up the bracket with the frame and take one of the longest hex bolts and slide it through the bracket, make sure it comes out the other side of the frame. This will allow us to hold it in place while we reinstall that factory bolt on the bottom. And keep in mind, we are gonna snug this up but not tighten it down because we do have a lot of adjustability in this bracket. We wanna adjust where our bumper sits. So grab your 18 millimeter socket and snug this up. Now on the inside of that long bolt we installed through the frame, make sure you have a washer on each side and that nylon lock nut as well. Grab your 18 millimeter socket and 19 millimeter wrench and tighten this up. And keep in mind, we only want it snug, not all the way tight, so we can finish our install. Repeat that on the other side.
Now before we can install our new bumper, we do need to transfer over some stuff from our previous bumper. We're gonna transfer over these factory fog lights. To remove it, what you're gonna do is remove these three 10 millimeter bolts. So grab that 10 millimeter socket and get these out. Now once you have the bolts removed from the bracket, go ahead and grab the entire light and pull it straight out. And then we can disconnect the wiring harness. So I have my fog light off to the side. What we're gonna do is remove each of these plastic clips that hold on the wiring harness to this bumper so that we can transfer it over. Grab your pop clip removal tool and remove these clips one by one. Continue moving along your bumper until all of these plastic clips are removed. And now we can remove the 10 millimeter bolts that hold in this fog light. Now one is missing here on our bumper but go ahead and grab that 10 millimeter socket and get all of these removed. And then remove the fog light. All right, now that we have our factory bumper uninstalled from our truck, we can check it out side by side with our new bumper there. Now, as you guys can see, this one is a lot larger and stronger than the factory bumper. Where this one is mostly plastic, our new bumper features plate and tube steel construction with a nice gloss black finish. And in addition to the bumper, it also provides coverage for the grille and headlights as well. It has several mounting points for the addition of D-rings and will provide a ton more protection than that factory bumper. So with that said, let's go ahead and finish up our install. Now what we can do is actually transfer over those factory fog lights because they do work with this bumper. Now one thing I did want to point out is you do need to flip flop the sides. So we have the right side fog light here and it's going to go in the left side of the bumper. I did disconnect the wiring harness because we will have to flip that around as well. But go ahead and line up the bracket and you'll tell if you're using the correct side because they are three in this configuration. Grab your small M6 hardware. Line it up and get it installed with a washer on either side and a nylon lock nut. Repeat that for the rest of the mounting holes. And now that all of the bolts are installed, go ahead and grab a 10 millimeter socket and 10 millimeter wrench and get these tightened down. Now we're lining up the other side and keep in mind we're using the left side fog on the right side of the bumper. And again, you can just check the configuration of the brackets to make sure you're using the proper one. Grab your hardware and get it installed.
Then go ahead and grab your 10 millimeter wrench and 10 millimeter socket to tighten it down. Now what I was mentioning earlier about swapping the fogs around is not true for the wiring harness. So you may need to unplug it and swap it side to side. Basically what you want is this large gray connector needs to end up on the driver's side where it is factory. Luckily these two connectors for the fog light are identical so you can swap it around. All you need to do is unplug it and plug it back in on the other side. Again, you just wanna make sure that this large gray bracket ends up on your driver's side. All right, now at this point, what we need to do is grab the bumper and get it mounted on top of our brackets. Now it is pretty large and it's definitely heavy, so you're gonna to wanna to grab a few friends to help out. So once you have them, go ahead and grab the bumper. Go ahead and line it up on each side under the headlight and line it up with the brackets. Now we can get our brackets bolted up to our bumper. I'm gonna go in with a hex bolt and a washer from the far side, just to make it a little easier to tighten it down because we do have the fog lights next to the bracket. Make sure you throw a washer on both sides and thread on your nylon lock nut. Repeat that for the rest of your mounting points. Now these bottom two may be a little bit more difficult because you do have to line up all three brackets. So you may have to finagle the bumper a bit to get it to line up. Same process, go ahead and use a washer on both sides of this hex bolt. Sandwiching all the brackets together. And with your nylon lock nut, go ahead and thread that down. Now with your 19 millimeter socket and 18 millimeter bolt, go ahead and tighten these down. Now go ahead and tighten down the rest of your brackets. You wanna make sure to be repeating this on the other side as you go. And if you do need to make any adjustments, you can do so with these brackets. Continue on tightening down all of your bolts. We're gonna do the hardware that connects the main bracket to the frame. We're starting with the smaller hardware. This one is a 16 bolt and a 17 nut. So go ahead and grab those tools and tighten it down. And right underneath that, we have an 18 millimeter bolt and a 19 millimeter nut. Go ahead and tighten that down as well. And then the other two on the far side of the frame may need wrenches for, because it is tough to get a socket in there. Grab an 18 and a 19, go ahead and tighten it down. Okay. 
And this final one might be hard to see, but same process, 18 and 19 millimeter wrenches. Go ahead and get them tightened down. Now you want to make sure that you tighten down the bolts on the other side and also connect the fog light main connector, the large gray one. Now you are going to have a bit of slack in your fog light wiring. What I would do is collect it all together and just throw a zip tie up there. Make sure it's secured out of the way, not near anything moving hot or sharp. Now what you can do is install your sensors or sensor plugs. Now you can do this with the bumper off of the truck or you can definitely access it underneath as well. And all you need to do to install these plugs if your bumper is not equipped with the sensor, just go ahead and press them in place. And then if you do have sensors, there is gonna be threaded holes on the top and the bottom that help you get those lined up and bolted down. Repeat that for the rest of your sensor plugs or sensors. Now that your bumper is all on and bolted down, we can replace the grill. Go ahead and line up the top brackets on top of the grill. And also line up the bottom and press it into place. Then go ahead and replace the bolts in the top of your grill. And with your 10 millimeter socket, tighten it down. Repeat that with the rest of your bolts. And then once you're done, make sure you replace the rad support cover. All right, so I did want to point out one thing about your wheel well liners. Because this bumper gives you a bit more clearance than the factory, you will have them hang down just a few inches underneath. Now, if you don't like this look, you can trim it with a razor knife or a similar tool, and then just secure it to the bottom of your bumper. Now, we're not gonna be trimming today, but if you would like to trim it, it's a pretty simple process, and it does make it look a little bit cleaner underneath. All right, so that is gonna do it for the review and install of this bumper. And remember for all things Ram, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.